Hi, it's Twitch. Welcome back to my channel. So the full moon is at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we're going to be discussing the full moon. So this video is going to be broken into four different sections. The introduction, we'll be discussing cleansing baths. We've talked about that before, but I don't know if everyone's watched all my videos. The third one will be charging full moon water and all the different ways you can use the water. And then the last one will be a full moon spell. So I'm excited to do this. Okay, so this is the cleansing part of the video. So I have discussed it before, probably more than once. <laughs> but okay, so this is how I would start out my full moon is I would cleanse my home first. Okay, so I would light some, this is actually mugwort but my, my, the sage that I have uh, that's already been lit, it's kind of falling apart, so I don't want to show you that one. So I would first do that, cleanse my whole home, then I would take a shower. And then you're going to, well, your bathroom's going to be clean. It's got to be clean. I would only have the items in there I need. You can use stones if you want to. I like to put those in my bath uh, or around my bath. Sometimes I put them on like my chakras when I'm in the tub. So anyway, this is how you're gonna do it. You're going to run your water. And remember the intention is to cleanse yourself and replace with positive energies. And there's different ways to do it. Um, I used to have, have them wrote down like different, all different um, cleansing full moon baths. But I don't have that anymore. I'm just gonna tell you the basic way. So first, you need to have Epsom salt. And I can show you the different ones that I have. I don't, I know I have regular somewhere, but they have, Dr. Till's has a lot. This one um, has Epsom salt and pink Himalayan sea salt, which is awesome because you need both. <laughs> so that one's great. And it's got essential oils in it too. And these you can get at the Dollar Tree. They have several different ones. This is lavender. It's not the same one I just showed you. This one is cannabis. This one's pretty cool. We also had the body wash and the, the one that you, um, it's like a foaming stuff that you put under the faucet. <laughs> anyway, so you're going to need a an Epsom salt first. And then you're going to need sea salt. So any type. This is a pink Himalayan fine sea salt. You're not going to believe this, but I got this at the Dollar Tree. <laughs> Uh, it's a great deal. Those are like 10 bucks in the store. And I've showed you guys th this before. It's a light gray kind. I've done the, the black salt with it. And then this is coarse sea salt. You can use, um, I also have um, the fine sea salt. You can use whatever you want. I'm just showing you different options so you know that you don't have to use a specific one, okay? And then you're going to want some Florida water. That's not as easy to come by. It may be where you're located, but it's not where I'm located at. <laughs> I went everywhere and I finally found it at like a Walgreens, nowhere near my house. <laughs> it was in a totally different county. It was probably, I don't remember how far away, but <laughs> they seem to cost more online and in, and in which shops, it, metaphysical shops, if you can find them there. So I add this because I have dry skin. You don't have to, but I, I love this type of container for it. It's great. So I suggest, oh, I forgot to show you one more thing. This is the other pink salt that I have. This one's not been opened yet. Uh, my other one came from the Dollar Tree, same size. <laughs> uh, this one was obviously a lot more, but I don't know why I haven't opened it yet. So you're gonna need a little scooper this came, uh, I've had this for a few years. It came with a gift set from like Walmart for Christmas. Somebody bought me something, it was like $2. It was like some bath salts and it came with this. Okay, so you're gonna, sorry. You're gonna, you're gonna have like three scoops of each is what I do of the Epsom salt. And each time I remember the intention, I light a candle and sometimes I even do magic in there. Like it's just whatever you wanna do. Three of each, the Epsom salt this sea salt anytime you want and then the three little dabs of the Florida water you gotta be careful it will pour out so 
Okay, then you turn your water off and you're going to relax. And like I said, there are different things, techniques you can do while you're in there. I like to play music from YouTube has like binaural beats and you can find a cleansing one there. That's what I suggest. And turn the lights off, just have a candle lit and you're going to cleanse yourself for about 30, 45 minutes if you can. I mean, your water may get cold, so you may need to put a little heater in there. We have one in the bathroom just in case we need it. Okay, so that is, sorry, I can't find anything. I hate when I do this. Okay, so that is the ways that I would cleanse. Cleanse your home, act, like clean it, and then cleanse it, and then you're going to cleanse yourself. Okay, so this is going to be the charging portion. So I didn't discuss this in the last one, but I personally also cleanse all my stones. I forgot to tell you that. I cleanse all my stones because you can use them in this next part. Okay, so we're not just charging water. We're also charging our stones. So we take our stones outside. It's been raining though, so we gotta be careful. We take our stones outside or put them in a window where the moon can, can the, the light from the moon can hit the stones. Um, even a wand. And I discussed before that I would show you my wand. So give me a moment. I do plan on, I do plan on getting something different. This is actually a pencil, but I've been told, no, that's a wand. So, um, you need a wand for the next portion, so <laughs> I thought I'd go ahead and let you know. Anyway, so this is what I do. I either go buy, buy like, they're what, a dollar or less distilled water, or you can get spring water, or you can just use your tap water. But the reason why I do distilled water too is because I like to do projects with them. And we will discuss that in a minute. So also, we go to Costco and get a 40 pack of water bottles for three bucks. Get you at least one of those and take those outside too. Let the, let the moon, the light from the moon also hit those water bottles, all your jugs of water and take some containers like jars of water as well. And you're gonna put stones in them and you're gonna label it. So you're gonna have uh, like, you can do ameth amethyst and shungite was a good one. I think that one was for skin. I can't remember, but I had all different combinations. So you do want to be careful because the water can go bad. Make sure it's not a stone that cannot be touched by water. So like kyanite, uh, selenite, tourmaline, there's, there's several of them. You can look it up. There are several of them that cannot be touched by water. Okay, so you cannot put those in there. I did actually, um, my shungite was actually, well shungite is, you used in water to to cleanse it but this wasn't that type of shungite it was tumbled and it actually got damaged from doing it numerous times so anyway i used to put it in my water and drink the water that's another thing so i like to take what i like to do with my water is i like to water the plants with it i like to drink it put it in my tea you can put it in your bath like there's so many different things you can do with it it's it's, it can get fun. And then there's projects you could do too. So you can make uh, room sprays. Um, there's there's numerous. If I think of anything else after the video, I will put it in the de uh, description area. It is where the name of the video is. There's going to be like a little arrow. Click on that and that's where the description is. And also, if you were subscribed, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Because you will... You, you'll see what I have a store, <laughs> but if you are subscribed, if you hit that bell button, you'll get notifications. So you'll know exactly when I load my videos because it's not always the same time. And I apologize about that. So anyway, there's all, there's all different projects you can do with the water. So you're going to charge your stones. You're going to charge your water and you can even charge your tarot decks. Yes. So you're going to take your scrying sphere out there, whatever you're using, um, you can, I mean, really basically anything and don't forget your wand. You're going to need it in the next portion. So I would actually do that tomorrow night, this part, 
because you, you need it to be charged, okay? So, we've discussed cleansing and charging for the full moon. Okay, so I did forget to tell you two things. So, <laughs> when you're charging water, it's raining. So, right, full moon rainwater is the best. So, if you can catch that full moon rainwater as well, try to do that, okay? And the other thing is, I forgot to tell you what I was sipping on. It's, it's nothing. It's just Herba Mate, Spearmint, Sink, Sinkaful, and Earl Grey. I just obviously needed the energy in. Sinkaful is, I mean, like I said, it's for all the areas. So I thought I could use that. <laughs> and um, I forgot to use some of my full moon water for my tea for tonight. Oh, well, I guess I'll do it tomorrow because I do still have a lot of full moon water and I have them all labeled like the month. Okay, so let's go on to, first, I want to discuss the types of spells that you can do for the <clears throat> full moon. I know we've already discussed that, but not everyone watches all my videos or watches them all the way through. So, those are creating harmony and relationships, bringing peace into a marriage, prophecy and divination. Like I said, we're going to just, that's going to be a, a video one day, just divination. Stopping arguments between lovers or friends, bringing about a new romance, unleashing musical talents, removing psychic blocks, protection of home and property. We've discussed that. Emotional healing. General spells for luck. We will discuss that. Advancement of career or work. Boosting self-confidence. Any part of your life that needs extra power. Okay, so... Okay, we're, I'm going to tell you a spell that I done a few months ago. And I will tell you, if you have not done any magic yet, you're a beginner and you're here to find out everything you need to know before you get into it, that's great. Um, I'm sorry that I did not do a video on the rest of the basics and the tools in witchcraft. I haven't got to that yet. But with it being a full moon, I wanted to go ahead and get this video out. And I've done the moon milk last night. Um, I don't think anybody's seen it yet. So, and I think, was the, I think it was the night before that we discussed um, the moon in general and, well, and also the goddess of the week. So, I'm going to tell you this first and then I'm going to do a basic rundown of, of how to do spells. But I will do... I think I'll do another video separate from this. I'll try to do that tonight so y'all can use that if you need to. Okay, so you're going to take, you'll have time because you need to do this tomorrow. You're, you're going to take this wands after it's been charged, okay? This is to draw down the moon. It says you need 26 ounces of salt. I don't know why you need that much. <laughs> it says a wand or twig and a chair or stool, which is optional. I couldn't go outside that night. I had to do it from the window because my neighbor was outside on her back porch as well. So I couldn't do it that way. But it still worked. It, it definitely worked. Uh, so you can go outside and outdoors. Uh, you know, nature is the best. I mean, it's even for one of your chakras, which is actually above your crown. Okay. So, it says you can go somewhere like your backyard, woodland areas, or open spaces such as fields or great places to conduct the ceremony. The important part is being able to see the moon in all its glory. Playing peaceful, meditative music is also a lovely way to get into the spirit of the spell. Either way, be it indoors or out, the ritual is still the same. Take a fair amount of salt and create a large circle with it on the ground. I use sea salt, but you can also use... If I was out in the woods, I'd probably use black salt so I felt safe, you know. Okay, so you're going to create a large circle on the ground. I, that's why I don't understand why they said 26 ounces. Maybe that's what most of them come in, the big ones. Okay, step to the side and stand with your legs slightly apart. If you own a wand, point it at the moon. If you don't have one, you can collect a large enough twig from a nearby tree. Just be sure to thank the tree for its offering. I don't do that. I only pick one up off the ground. And I know many other witches are the same way. Um, we don't kill anything. 
and we still think it when we, I mean, think nature when we pick it up, you know. Okay. At this stage, gaze upon the moon's surface and imagine it radiating a magic, ma radiating magic down from the skies. For a few minutes, breathe in its essence and visualize it showering you with magical beams of light. As you inhale, picture yourself receiving power. And as you exhale, imagine you are breathing out any impurities in your body. Say the spell three times. I call the goddess of the moon. Bring your power around me and into my sight. Silver light, shine down bright this night. Fill me with your magic soon. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to put this in the description area. Because I'm sure you may have not understood me clearly or heard it. Whatever. Um, so you're going to say it three times. So after you have... Just like I say at the end of all my spells, so mote it be. That's M-O-T-E. <laughs> if you are fit and able, sit cross-legged inside your circle of salt and close your eyes. If not, sit on a chair or, st or stool. Hold the wand with both hands at each tip, top and bottom, and meditate on it. You might start to feel the wand become heavy with power, or you may feel a tingling sensation run up each arm. If this happens... It is a sign that the moon's magic is transporting its energy toward you. Completely relax your body, letting your head drop to your chin. Feel the stretch at the back of your neck and hold the position for about 10 seconds. Bring the head upward, this time turning it to the right. Once again, hold for 10 seconds. Repeat this, facing the left, then facing straight ahead. Push back your shoulders for a further 10 seconds before relaxing. Try to stay in this place for as long as a period as you can. The more time you remain fully undisturbed and at one with your wand, the more divine light will engulf you. Some witches will use the lunar calendar every time they arrange an event in their life or cast a spell. Symbols of lunar animals such as hares. I'm not sure why this is with it. I'm just going to read it anyway. Um, and badgers are often present in a witch's home or on their altar. These creatures are steeped in a magical in magical influence and represent the moon's presence during <clears throat> a ritual. It is also not uncommon for witches to wear moonstone jewelry or pendants decorated with a triple moon, representing Demeter, the triple goddess, or mother goddess. So that's what I have. I used to just have a pen pentagram, but ah, see, can you see it? My husband has one too. Well, this butterfly is a... Okay. Anyway, you, you know what it is, right? <laughs> I have sunstone. So, right before a, a full moon, I need sunstone to help me be more balanced. So, that's a clue if you're paying attention. <laughs> okay. So, the triple moon is composed of a full moon with a waxing and waning moon positioned at either side. Sometimes the full moon portion is replaced with a pentagram symbol. However you want to celebrate it, one thing is certain. Nearly all witches feel some affinity with the moon and worship it in their own way. It's got the, the moon phases and stuff. Uh, this is the witch's way. It's, it's a great, great book. You gotta credit the witch's way. <laughs> gotta do it the proper way. So... I said that I would, I'm just going to, I've been using this book for everything I've been talking to you about because it's, it's, it's a great book. So, let's discuss basics of spell casting real quick. So, as you know, the casting a circle helps you with protection. So, the circle acts as a force field of good, blocking out any negative energies that might otherwise enter your space or your body. <laughs> The circle also magnifies your own magic, encapsulating the power you are summoning. Witches cast circles in many ways. Once again, this is personal to each practitioner, so add your own spin if you want. For those who have never cast a circle before, here is one method we use. Find a flat, open space in your home, somewhere near your altar. The area doesn't have to be big, just large enough for you to stand inside. Use a compass on your smartphone and find the four cardinal directions Find one item that represents each of the elements. At each point in the circle, place the appropriate item on the ground. I don't do it like that. I just make sure I use all the elements. Okay, for example, East. Oh, let me tell you something. I have this app that's $5 a month, and it's called, I can't see it because I'm using my phone, but it's called, uh, I think it's 
Moon Phase Agenda app. It's, oh, it's five dollars a year. Uh, I think you get it like free for a week, and it's five dollars a year. Anyway, it it's really freaking cool that it has that. That's where I've got the um, the moon milk recipe. So anyway, it has the um, northeast, south, and west on your ground, wherever you point your phone at. It's really cool. So east represents air. Possible items include dried sage or a sage. Excuse me, smudging stick, a feather, or an incense stick. I see people do this in the movies, but I don't. I haven't personally done it. But I, mean, I also haven't even read this page, honestly. <laughs> So, might be something I try one day. South represents fire. Possible items include an oil burner, a candle, or a tea light. West represents water. Possible items include a seashell, a small pot of sand, a chalice of water, or rainwater collected in a cup. I think I will start doing this. North represents earth. Possible items include a pot of soil, a potted plant, crystals, rocks, or stones. Okay, so you're going to stand in the center of the circle and face east. Relax your shoulders and visualize open air. Say these words. Spirits of air, I summon you. Turn to the south and, south and imagine a candle flickering in your mind's eye. Say these words. Spirits of fire, I summon you. Turn to the west and envision yourself on a beach looking out to the ocean. Say these words. Spirits of the water, I summon you. Finally, turn to the north and picture yourself beneath a large oak tree with your hands on the ground. Say these words. Spirits of the earth, I summon you. Now, I have you know, summon the spirits from a certain direction though. Remain facing north. Conjure up an image in your mind of all four elements shining a light to a focal point above your head. Hold this image in your mind's eye for a few minutes. Say these words. Mother Earth, I thank you for your blessings and ask that you fill the circle with luminous light. Let nothing negative enter the space. The circle is now blessed. So mode it be. So using candle spells, I am going to talk about this real quick. These days, witches use small, it says cigar-sized candles for their spells. Spell candles, approximately five inches. These are easily accessible online. You can also, there's a lot of people that actually use birthday candles because they're tiny and spells don't last long enough to burn out a candle. They're, they say they're easily accessible online and can often be purchased directly from witches who choose to make their own. Or like a metaphysical shop, or from me. <laughs> To prepare your candle, place it under running water to cleanse it and anoint it by smearing it with a small amount of pure vegetable oil. Okay, I have never put water on my candles. Now, you can um, anoint your candles with oil. And I wouldn't use vegetable oil. I mean, you can use any type of carrot oil you want, but you can also put, like, herbs and essential oils in them. There are so many ways to get creative and we will like i said we'll discuss this further one day i'm actually not going to do an extra video i think that's enough to get you started or uh, if you think you're ready if not you can wait <laughs> but we are going to discuss uh what the colors of the candles mean what colors mean period we will discuss a lot of different things it's just, it's going to take some time i don't have time just to make videos all the time so i apologize but anyway we learned a lot tonight you know, I even learn things as I'm researching to do my videos. So, I think that's fun. Now, I'm going to have to try to figure out how I can get my items charged tonight. <laughs> I might have to wait. So, but I will say, you know, with it being 4.30 a.m. When it's at 100%, well, 4.30 a.m. here is Eastern Standard Time. I That worries me because you don't want the light to hit it. Uh, they, they say it, it can, turns into um, celestial, celestial water if um, you let the water charge too long. So, you got to be careful about charging things too long. Yeah, um, it, it gets light about 7, so, or by 7. So, it, you only need it charged for a few hours anyway. So, if you want to do it at 4.30 or do it now and then to get it before it gets... I do an alarm clock usually, or I wake up a lot anyway. But remember, you only need it out there for a few hours. Yes, I have forgotten. Some people say they want the sun and the moon. So what they do is they put it out not long before it gets light. So it's up to you how you want to do it. <laughs> but anyway, so the next video, like I said, I was supposed to actually do that tonight, but I wanted to do the full moon stuff. The next video, I'm, I'm hoping I can get it out there. I have found a lot of information about 
herbs and medications. I mean, just, it's crazy. There's certain herbs that don't mix with certain medications very well. And, you know, there's herbs that we cannot consume. There's certain herbs that I know females cannot consume and then pregnant women can consume. Um, I, can't, I think it's rue. Uh, it would make me have a period, but my husband can use it, you know? So, we just got to be careful. And I'm not, I can't let myself have them because of the endometriosis. I have to stop it. So, that would be dangerous for me, you know? And did you know that elderberries, even though we we drink elderberry syrup, I mean, we love elderberry tea, right? I have elderberries and elderberry flowers for my teas, but it has to already be dried out. You can't use fresh. It's dangerous. It's poisonous that way. Yes, I know. It's crazy. We, we learn so much, and that's why I'm saying, like, even if I had a video every day for the rest of my life, we would always still have something to talk about because there's so much to learn with Strap. And I'll learn things too as, as we go. And I, I think it's fun. So anyway, I hope you all have had a great weekend and that you have a good night. And I will see you tomorrow.